a busy day for being here. Uh, I just want to say a few words about some of what's going on. And as chairman of the Senate Budget Committee, uh, I want to say a few words about the $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill that a number of us are fighting for. And I'd also like to make some brief comments uh, about what Senator Manchin uh, said earlier today. Uh, first, let us be clear. Uh, poll after poll, including polls in West Virginia, show that what we are trying to do in this reconciliation bill is enormously popular among the American people. But it's not just the American people who support what we're trying to do. 48 out of 50 members of the Senate Democratic Caucus support the bill, and 210 members, about 96 percent of the House Democratic Caucus support the bill. And by the way, the President of the United States uh, supports the bill. Uh, and while we're at it, uh, let me tell you who is vigorously opposed to this legislation. And I think it's important that the American people understand that, because this is the corruption of American politics. The pharmaceutical industry is currently spending hundreds of millions of dollars on lobbying, on campaign contributions, on advertising to oppose this bill because they do not want to have us lower the outrageously high cost of prescription drugs in America. The health insurance industry is spending a huge amount of money because they do not want us to expand Medicare to cover dental, hearing aids, and eyeglasses. The fossil fuel industry, the coal companies and the oil companies, are spending millions of dollars despite the fact that the scientists are virtually unanimous in telling us that we must end our dependence on fossil fuel and move to energy efficiency and sustainable energy if we are going to save this planet. And it goes without saying that the billionaire class and the large corporations are spending a fortune in opposition to this bill because they love the idea that some of the wealthiest people in this country and the largest corporations in a given year do not pay a nickel in federal income tax. And they're fighting to preserve that absurdity. In other words, we are, talking, we are taking on some of the most powerful special interests in this country who will end up spending huge amounts of money in order to prevent us from doing what we should be doing, protecting the needs of working families, the elderly, the children, the sick, and the poor, and protecting this planet for future generations. Now, Senator Manchin, as I understand it, talked about today about not wanting to see our country become an entitlement society. Well, I am not exactly sure what he means by that. Does that mean that we end the $300 direct payments for working class parents, which have cut childhood poverty in this country as a result of the American Rescue Plan in half? Is protecting working families and cutting childhood poverty an entitlement? Does Senator Manchin think we should once again have one of the highest levels of childhood poverty of any major country on earth? At a time when millions of seniors in Vermont, in West Virginia, all across this country have teeth in their mouths that are rotting, when they can't afford hearing aids in order to communicate with their grandchildren, and when they can't afford a pair of glasses in order to read a newspaper, does Senator Manchin really believe that seniors are not entitled to digest their food and that they're not entitled to hear and see properly? Is that really too much to ask in the richest country on earth that elderly people have teeth in their mouth and can see and can hear? Does Senator Manchin not believe that we have to end the absurdity of the United States paying by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, sometimes 10 times more for a particular drug than is paid in Canada or other countries around the world. 
Does Senator Manchin believe that we should be the only major country on earth not to guarantee paid family and medical leave, and that working mothers should not be able to stay home with a child who is sick? Are workers not entitled to be able to do that? Does Senator Manchin believe that working class parents in West Virginia and Vermont should not have to pay, does he believe that they should have to pay 25 or 30 percent of their incomes on child care all over this country? Working class families are paying 25 or 30 percent of their incomes on child care so that they could go out and do their jobs. Are the children of this country not entitled to high quality child care and pre K? education. Does Senator Manchin not believe that working families in this country are entitled, entitled to affordable housing and that we should not have some 600,000 people in America, including many veterans, sleeping out on the streets? Does Senator Manchin not believe that at a time when we have a major labor shortage in many parts of this country because our young people lack the skills they need, that they are not entitled to at least two years of free community college so they can get the training in order to go out and get the good paying jobs that are there. And perhaps most importantly, does Senator Manchin not believe what the scientists are telling us? That we face an existential threat regarding climate change and that it is absolutely imperative that we move boldly to cut carbon emissions. Scientists have told us we're on a red alert. Some of you know the science, some a number of scientists received the Nobel Prize for their work on climate change. Does Senator Manchin not believe that our children and grandchildren are entitled to live in a country and a world that is healthy and is habitable? Senator Manchin has been extremely critical of the three and a half trillion dollar proposal that many of us support. In fact, nine out of 11 members of the Budget Committee support. But the time is long overdue for him to tell us with specificity, not generalities, we're beyond generalities, with specificity what he wants and what he does not want, and to explain that to the people of West Virginia and America. I look forward to working with Senator Manchin and everyone else in the Senate to pass a strong reconciliation bill as well as a bipartisan infrastructure.